Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. I'm going to today show you Mr. Brown again. Somebody act, somebody mentioned in my comments, I don't remember, I should write I should write things down. I started to write things down, but you guess what? I left the notebook in the other room, so it'll have to just be the somebody said. Um, oh, I know what else I forgot to get. Oh shucks, I have to I'm gonna have to go in the other room and get it. Rusty was asking about uh, my mask fogging up and I was going to show him what I use. I will do that. Rusty, I won't forget. But um, I forgot where I was going <laughs> now. Oh man, that's all it took. Somebody asked a question. I know, but I forgot what the question was. <laughs> Something about Mr. Brown, probably. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was going to be Mr. Brown's channel pretty soon if I keep showing Mr. Brown, which is true. Probably. Oh, gosh, I almost forgot. Thank you for being my memory. <laughs> oh, wow. And I didn't even that, know what I was remembering. <laughs> that really flew out of my head real fast because the other one zoomed in. It's like when you walk through the doorway, you're, you it wipes your head clean while well, that thought washed. It says, this one's more important. Just move over. Rusty's question was very important, but they're both important. So maybe, maybe Mr. Brown will be the new channel person. <laughs> when he learns to speak English, I'll let him be the person of the in front of the camera. But till then, it's going to be me. I um, wanted to show you. I was working on. I watched. Oh gosh. The, these people that are making things really give me, make me want to make other things. But i got to finish what I started. I've got two projects going, and I usually have just one project at a time. So I finish it, then I move on to the next one. I'm still waiting to make more bracelets. I want to crochet bracelets with beads. But there's too many things that have come along, so I keep doing them instead. I know it's getting harder and harder to... I don't have enough time in the day and I can't stay up all night so I I don't know how I'm going to do it and I'm retired <laughs> okay well I wanted to show you how far I got on this I'm I'm this far I've got that much whoops is that even pretty almost much. pretty much I've got about that much more to go when it's not hers is um, Karina's is a little bit more shorter up here because it's got the drawstring string through. Mine doesn't have the drawstring through yet, but I'm that far. I worked on it today while I was watching um, Pamela do the new stitch. I forgot what that stitch was called. The Haggard stitch, that's what it was called. I think it's called the ha or the Hag stitch. I don't know. Right. I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's hag. just hag. Um, it was, I had actually on one of the, the shawls that I ripped out, I was I was testing on that a bunch of different stitches and I did the hag stitch on it and I love the looks of the hag stitch. It does sort of look like you're knitting and I know how to knit. Rusty, you are right. He said I think she knows how to knit. He wasn't <laughs> sure. But yes, I do knit. I don't I don't knit anything fancy. I have taught myself how to use the four needles to do socks. I did one sock if I ever find that one sock, I'll show you it, but I don't know where I, what I did with it. It used to be in a drawer, in one of my junk drawers, but I cleaned out my junk drawers one time, and I might have cleaned that out, too. Oh, my, he's tired. <laughs> Ooh, he was watching a little TV. We watched this program that it's about a guy that is goes around totally barefoot, and another and guy was in dual, the military. Dual survival. Dual survival. And it's really interesting because they, they play out scenarios of people that were stranded in certain areas and what they have. And they pretend that they are that person. It's really interesting. And like he knows a lot of stuff. And I've said, how does he know all this stuff? And he says, because he's uh, experienced. And I said, well, I've lived a long time and I don't know half of it. But I didn't experience it. Well, so it's also a survival mind. instructor, too. Well, that might make the difference. But still... He does everything that he's he's talking about. He's showing it and doing it, and it's and they eat a lot of stuff that I don't know if I could eat. I could eat the <laughs> bugs a lot easier than I could the the animals that they had to kill to eat. I couldn't do that because I can't clean. I can't 
No, thank you. I would <laughs> no. I would just eat the bugs, cook the bugs in the fire, because the guy knows how to make a fire, so I would just cook the bug. And it would taste, I'm sure, crispy and crunchy. And it would be good. It's like when I would go fishing with my dad. And we would go ice fishing. Um, the people down south probably never have ice fished, but we used mm. to go ice fishing on the lake, on Chautauqua Lake. But a lot of people have little huts. We never had a hut. We were out in the wind blowing on us. We did have a pop belly stove that we brought out there, which I don't know if you know what a pop belly stove is, but we had a pop mm. belly stove. It was a, a small one, and we used to light it, and that was our heat. So we, if you were cold, you could kind of stand close to it. Well, when we would catch a fish, we had we had minnows that were salted, and that was the bait. But once you caught a fish, you used to take the fish and use part of that fish for your bait. And we would always, it would be in the winter, so it was like there was, seemed like there's always fish eggs in the fish because they probably spawn in the spring or mm -hmm. with lay their eggs in the spring and so we would cut the fish open and inside would be the fish eggs so I would eat the fish eggs a, f a fish I could I could clean a fish but I can't clean a, a, f a warm blooded animal <laughs> for whatever reason I can't do it I can I can fillet and do a fish but you know if you're cleaning a fish and it's flopping when you're cleaning I can't eat it that day I have to Put it in the refrigerator and let him really just relax and our <laughs> freezer and then maybe the next day I could eat them but I can't eat them the same day that I cleaned them because of the flopping around because fish fish are funny fish are like turtles they take forever to die Sometimes. oh god grief they're horrible uh, I, the ones that I've, I've cleaned a lot of fish in my life my father was um he used to he used to do his farm work in the morning or farm work well, this one he retired. He he actually fished a lot when he was working, but he used to have to get up real early and do a lot of the farm work, then go fishing, get home, clean the fish, and then go to work for 4 to 12. Well, when he retired, he used to try to get a lot of his farm work done that could be done in one day, you know, like if he had to horse hold berries or... Um, pound post in the grapes we would get them done like at the beginning part of the whatever day or, or the end of the week whichever and then he would plan to go fishing the rest of the time and he would fish and he used to catch the silver silver bass mm -hmm. and, silver calico. and calico and they're just little fish but he would catch like 60 or 70 and if he caught that he'd had a bad day if he caught 90 he had a good day then he used to sit there in the by, under the cherry tree in our backyard and he used to have the fish board and the fish board was it was like long and then it had a narrow part that went like at an angle like a triangle and on the straight edge of it was where I sat and my thumbnail used to get so soft from holding the fish skin down because he used to fillet them and I used to take the skin off so he put this little hammer thing on the end where you pulled the little hammer up and when you put you peeled the skin back just the, or the fish back a little and put the hammer down and it would hold it for you so you could slide the knife underneath there to take the skin off and so this is what I used to do and then oh boy am I chatty <laughs> oh, I got more to tell you and then after we would be cleaning the fish my mother would wash the fish and bag it up into one pound packages and freeze it well there was many a time that I had to go and I was a volunteer for the at the at the hospital. I was a candy striper. No, I didn't stripe real candy. It was where you you did volunteer work at a hospital and I did candy striping and I used to do it two days a week and if I was cleaning fish, oh my goodness. I didn't I was to ask my sister, "Can you do this so that my hands don't stink cuz fish is very hard to get off your hands." So you could put lemon juice on it, and I also used to rub them on the on the stainless steel. Anything stainless steel would kind of help neutralize the smell and get that smell off my hands because I was going to be walking into the room. I'd smell like the fish lady, like the cockles and mussels, alive, mm. alive, ho. Oh, you know the there what the one with she wheeled her wheelbarrow down streets broad and narrow. 
crying cockles and mussels. Alive, alive. Oh, I couldn't think of the beginning. In Dublin's fair city. There we go. There you go. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. But anyways, I would smell like the fish woman. And I didn't want to smell like the fish woman. So, But my sisters never wanted to do the fish because they were, their hands would stink. And I go, yeah, your hands will stink. But, oh well. Well, let me put that little video in. I'm going to show you Mr. Brown. And I'm going to show you his little cage that's all painted. And I'm going to show you maybe a little bit of the garden. I don't know. I haven't edited that yet. It's still on the GoPro. I haven't done it yet. So if I cut it out, you won't see it. If it's there, you'll see it. So let's go to the video right here. Before we go to the video, I almost forgot. I got to... I got to put this in. It was I promised Rusty. In fact, I went and got it because I turned off the camera. And then I said, oh, I forgot to tell about the mask. Well, Rusty had asked, Rusty from Ozark Duke, he had asked if my, my mask fogged, or my glasses fogged up from the, from the mask. And no, mine doesn't because I wear this. This is the large, whoops, this is the larger. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I hear it's kind me. of muffled. I hear me so mm -hmm. good in here. And then I use this one. That's the adult version. This is version. the adult version. And then this is the kid version. I didn't go out to the car to get mine. But this is what the kid version is. And it fits me much better because I've got a small head. And so what we do is we, we have to put the foam thing on and the Velcro strap on. And put it on. And then we go in the store. We look like we're bubble heads, but you can see me smile. <laughs> and today, I almost got a hug from a little girl. Almost. Almost. We had to go to the store. I forgot to tell you. We went to the <laughs> store. <laughs> oh, good grief. I came back and now I got more to tell you. We went to the store today because I needed to get a new water dish. For those new babies when they be, when they come they're supposed to, they were they're supposed to be here tomorrow if they hatch we'll see but I needed a I needed a new water dish so we went down and when we went in the store here's this little girl and um she almost knocked the shopping cart on herself and I just kind of smiled and went like this and she wanted to come over and hug me and her mother stopped her which I can understand you can't hug anymore but it's so sad because Little kids love to hug. Even even me. I like to hug them back. And and it's sad because you can't. It's so sad. And then we went in and we saw Nick. Hi Nick. Nick is there. He works at the store at the Home Depot and we got mm -hmm. chicken was it home no, not no. Home Depot. Farm the farm tractor. store. Tractor supply. Tractor Sorry. Supply. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I get this all mixed up. Thank you. Tractor supply. Nick works there. And um, we got some chicken scratch and chicken pellets and my watering thing. And then the guy wanted us to get some more chickens. Another guy. And I said, no, thank you. I've got, I've got some hens sitting on eggs right now. And he says, well, he'll give them to us for 50 cents a uh, chick because they're getting too big. And he's got a whole batch more in the back room that he's got to get rid of. And he says, and I've got ducks. And I says, ducks are messy. He goes, yeah. They're really messy, and so I don't want any ducks. But um, I didn't get any chickens because I've got chickens galore, and um, I don't need any more. So there. Okay, now you can go to the video. Let's go. Mr. Brown just jumped down, and he's on my ugly wood floor. We were working on the computer doing my comments. Boy, I can't talk. What are you picking up? He's going to pick up the little slivers of wood. That's not good for you. Right there, I just did boons. Now I got to do Spitfire Red is next. I worked my way up. And as you can see, it's got a long way to go to get to the top. And then I know I'm at the top. <laughs> Jake wanted in, so I thought, well, not everybody has a bucket of dirt in the house, but I guess I do. This was brought in a long time ago when I had my pepper plants trying to grow them in here, and it didn't really work. This dirt was not the best. So I thought, well, let's put Mr. Brown in there and see what he does. And he's 
And then I gave him a little scratch to see if he would maybe pick at that because he's actually big enough to eat that stuff now. So he's in my flower pot inside. As you can see, I've got, this is my, this is my flower pot area. I got all these flowers and there's no flowers really today right now. It's just plants. And this is my grapefruit plant. And I was watching Pep, Peanut Pepper, I think his name is, and he was talking about one of his plants had thorns. Well, these have thorns. And he had heard that the ones with thorns don't ever bear fruit, and this never had fruit. And this is my other fig tree. I have a fig tree in the house, too, because it never gets to fruit outside. Whoa, where are you going? You just flew out? You gotta watch it. I don't know what Jake will do with you. Well, those are my holy shoes again. Mr. Brown's cage is painted. It looks beautiful. Oh my goodness. You would never know that this was so rusted. Look at it. Over here is where you can tell. This is where the guinea pig was doing all of its peeing because it's kind of roughish looking there and it got real thin. But it looks beautiful from a distance you'd never know. It's lovely, Jim. You did a good job. Thank you. This is our fire pit that it's sitting on. We kept it outside. Leedy thought I was keeping the... I think it was Leedy. I think so. She made the comment of wondering if the guinea... If um, the guinea pig... Listen to me. If Mr. Brown was kept outside. No. Just his cage was. Oh, you missed a spot. Oops. Mm -hmm. I noticed. It probably was right where there. that thing was probably slid over. Oh, that's okay. We'll just not know it. We won't notice it. Mr. Brown won't notice either. You want to bring it in and we'll yep. put it on his house? Mr. Brown is in this case. It's kind of out of this cage. You want to take the top off of that? This one was very sh was smaller and shorter. It doesn't fit like it's supposed to. Oh, well, hello there. Mr. Brown, don't you jump out. Or, whoa, come here. You want to flutter a little. Somebody liked your fluttering. There you go. And he's going to put the... He's going to put the cage back on. See, it sets on the outside of the box, which gives him a whole lot more room. Very good. You want to open the slide door? Oh, you're going to open the top. Okay, down you go, my friend. There you go. In your new home. Well, your old home, but your new home. And there you go. I still don't know if I left it in or not because I haven't edited this video yet. So I hope you enjoyed whatever you saw. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.